Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <coughs> Welcome to our tutorial example uh, videos for industrial automation where we're going to cover a uh, few pneumatic um, circuit problem. Okay, so the first problem uh, is basically an um, edge folding device that is actuated by a um, pneumatic cylinder. So uh, this is a sheet metal um, and Basically, this uh, pneumatic cylinder will be pushed forward so that it can uh, fold this sheet metal to 90 degree and make this shape. So, the limit, the condition that we have to follow is that uh, the travel rapid uh, it should have a rapid forward travel uh, so that we can uh, have a very high speed in the forward travel. So to achieve this, we need to use a quick exhaust valve, which we will show you in the simulation. And the retracting speed should be controllable, so you can control the speed of the retraction. And also another thing that uh, this uh, device should be only uh, actuated when you press a push button and this uh, roller lever valve is uh, actuated. So the roller lever valve could be uh, basically placed here. Uh, so that uh, it detects if there is any material or sheet metal available for folding or not. If there is no such material, then even if you press the push button, it will not move forward. So let's see how to solve this problem. So <coughs> as usual, we are going to use FuitSim uh, 3.6. And I have already prepared this one uh, by using the uh, component from the library which uh, I have already explained how to uh, make this circuit in my earlier video. You can refer to those videos as well. So this is a double acting cylinder and this is a 4 to a valve which one side pneumatically actuated but the uh, other side is basically uh, return, um, returned back to its original position by spring force. And we have uh, two uh, switches. One is a push button, another one is a roller um, roller lever valve um, as to detect the material or the workpiece and purposely I put it uh, without a spring loaded just for simulation purpose but in real life it will be spring loaded and basically the weight of the workpiece will cause it to be actuated and if the workpiece is not present then because of the spring force it will be uh, coming, uh, coming back to its original position Okay, now here is the flow control valve, uh, just for um, for the purpose of return speed should be controllable, so that's why I put this one. So as you can see, when it the uh, this air is uh, going out from this side, and it will be going through this valve, so that basically it is controlled. But where, where uh, through this throttle valve, but when the air is going up to the cylinder in this chamber it is basically going through this uh, this ball will be lifted up and it will have no flow control on the other hand uh, this is a quick exhaust valve so we want the forward speed to be as fast as possible so that's why we use this quick exhaust valve the principle of operation is such that when the air is going it will go through this port so it will go to one and this ball, uh, the ball will be lifted up so this port will be closed and then air will go to the uh, working port two but when air is exhausted from this port is basically uh, it is going uh, very fast uh, through this exhaust port instead of going through all the way to the original valve exhaust port so that will cause it to be exhausted uh, faster than as uh, than usual and then the speed will be also faster so let's see how to simulate this uh, problem and this is as usual the pressure source or the compressor so so let's play the simulation button and okay so we have to first put the work base so then it will be valve will be actuated and then you press the push button so you can see it is going very fast and you release the push button it will be controlled and you press it again it is very fast okay and then the return is controlled by this flow control valve 
so this is our um, first um, first example okay so let me close it and our second example let me just open it then we will discuss let's see okay so this is our first example and the next two example are almost similar uh, so I will skip this one rather this one is uh, more comprehensive so I will discuss this example but these two are almost uh, similar with, li with a little difference uh, which has been taken into consideration in this current example okay so here is basically we have an embossing um, machine okay so which is actuated by a double acting cylinder uh, powered by a double acting cylinder and the return of the die that means this embossing die is affected when the cylinder uh, has fully extended to the embossing position and the preset pressure is reached so that means there are two conditions one is the cylinder has to reach to its final position and there has to be some preset pressure that it has to achieve and then only uh, this will be retracted back so these two condition is there and uh, the uh, moving forward I mean the, the cylinder to move forward only one push button is required uh, there is no uh, there is no condition of workpiece retainer or as such so let's see how to solve this problem and how to simulate this okay so this is the double acting cylinder basically so I press the push button it will move forward and if uh, when it reaches the end position that means embossing position this uh, roller limit valve will be actuated so and these two and the, there is a preset pressure control valve is also there which is in series with this roller lever valve so what happened well once this is actuated the pressure will go here and uh, basically uh, it will not be actuated on uh, I mean it will not be connected to the port 2 unless this chamber as you can see this chamber I am taking pressure from this chamber to input to this control valve which is spring loaded and this is spring stiffness can be controllable so what happened here is basically once the pressure reaches to certain position certain value then basically this valve will be actuated so this air will be going to this to actuate this valve and then this uh, pressure will be connected to your working port and it will be going to actuate this uh, particular flow control uh, 4 to a valve so that the cylinder will be uh, retracted back so I repeat once I press it it will cause it to be actuated in one direction so that it will move forward so embossing cylinder will be moving forward but as it moves forward once it reaches the limit it will hit the limit and you have to make sure that to give the level uh, where you want to put the limit so I give level by double clicking this one as you can see edit level and you can put a1 here at 100 millimeter that means at the end position the cylinder moves from 0 to 100 millimeter and then uh, this one also you double click and you put the same level number a1 so then they will be interlinked so <laughs> And then once it hits the end limit, then this end limit, uh, the air will go to 1 to 2 and here in this port it will go. But it's still the valve will not be actuated unless this left chamber has enough pressure. And then once the pressure is there, then this, uh, this pilot valve inside the pressure control valve will be actuated, which will cause the air to flow to the 1 to 2 and basically the 4 to a valve will be actuated in the opposite direction and the cylinder will be retracted back so let's see we start so so basically we press this push button and it will start to move as you can see and in the embossing position then once it hits the limit basically and then once it hits the limit and the pressures are same then basically it is retracting back so you can see the pressure gauge shows the value of the pressure so initially the pressure is not high because I have maintained the pressure to be 10 bar for embossing so you can see it is 4.5 and then it will be 10 
and the 10.5 sorry 10.5 then only it will retract back so this is how the system works so this is to control the pressure so these are the two examples that I have planned for this video hope you have understood thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh